my class is on a sword just being a tool, okay? If some of this stuff doesn't make sense to you now, it will in the future, okay? So, a bit of a soppy moment, but I've obviously been doing this for a long time. And probably only in the last three or four years have I started to think of one of these as just a tool. By that, what I mean is, I no longer make the distinction, and if I'm being honest with myself, it's me being honest with myself as well, I no longer make the distinction between using it with one hand, using it with two hands, using it like this, hitting someone like that. So what I'm gonna do on this, in this class is I'm just gonna chuck a whole, rather than do all the talk at the beginning, I'm gonna get you moving, and I'm just gonna give you some exercises and things to start getting you used to thinking of this as just a tool. Like I said though, my journey's been a lot longer than most of yours, almost all of yours. So I'm at the point where it makes perfect sense to me, but it might not make sense to you right now. Hopefully it will in the future, further along your journey. So I call this a can opener because I'm just a fat bloke from London, right? So I've got these weird terminologies. Can opener to me. It's just a tool in my arm. I've never owned a sword, ever. Okay, I'll just pick one up at training and I'll use it, right? Because I'm tight like that. So we're gonna get moving. So first exercise we're gonna do, everybody here kind of, maybe with the exception of brand new spanking person, um, is used to your one and two handed cutting drills, right? No problem at all. Yeah, Benente, Benente, Pisani, Pisani, Sintani, Sintani, Trejo, it's up to you, and you used to do the same with two hands as well, yeah? Benente, Benente. What I want you to do, just as a bit of an extended warm up after your lunch, especially those people who have pastries, um, is get used to just go through your cuts, but just do alternate one and two handed. Okay, we're gonna do a whole bunch of little exercises with this, you're gonna be doing them like this in a second. I just want you to get used to it. Okay, I'm gonna start with Pendente, no problem. We might do it one handed to start off with. There's one, then I might stick two hands on. There's two, then I might stick one hand back on. There's one, two maybe, flush, yeah? True and false edge. I just want you to get used to just moving and doing different cuts with different, different hands on the weapon. Okay, so just to get used to dropping one on, taking one off. Okay, so just do straight up cutting drills, but one or two handed, just totally mix it up. Moving this thing around and transitioning it is super key because if you're gonna start thinking about when it's right to cut with one hand and come on with two and then, oh my God, there's an opening, I might do this. You gotta start getting used to thinking about transitioning it, okay? The reason why that's really important is because kind of like yesterday, your brain needs to be able to access stuff really, really quickly. When I said earlier, a minute ago, that I've started to stop thinking of it as just, you know what, I'm gonna use it with one hand the whole time, or oh, now I'm gonna use it with two hands all the time. One of the biggest things that made that change for me was the fact that I mess around with swords a lot, right? I throw them around, I transition them a lot, etc., etc. So now what happens when I do a play, if I'll take a thrust and come down with it and it starts to go completely peaked on with me, because I'm used to just playing around with one of these things, I won't think, ah, I won't think weird stuff like this anymore. I'll start thinking, okay, it's bosh. But it's accessible, because I'm used to it. I'm used to moving this thing around like it's just an extension of my body. That's what I want you to do, right? Left foot, right foot, it doesn't matter. I just want you to get used to moving half sword, like this, even put it in the left hand, bring this up, transition it back. I just want you to start getting used to thinking of it as a tool with two ends, with two pointy bits here, yeah? It's something that you can completely transition around with. Those exiles who are part of the armored division obviously will be a lot more used to this because they're, they're doing a lot of armored stuff, so this is kind of all pretty practical to them. But I just want you to start thinking about transitioning this weapon, okay? using it, moving it around, that's all. Just get a feel for it, get a feel for it. Rock and roll. So what we're gonna do, we start doing some actual stuff, right? So, uh, finente, finente, misani, misani, right? Basically, I want you to go through them in order. One, two, three, four. But, kind of like the first drill we did, I want you to think of, after every time you've done a cut, you need to change what position you've got the sword, okay? What, how you're holding the weapon. So for example, uh, I might do pendente. I'm just gonna stop in the middle for argument's sake. So that's number one, right? Number two, I might do like this. Number three, I might do like this. Number four, I might do like this. Yeah, then I'm back to one again. So now I'll do it with two hands. One, two, that's the same order, right? You know, three, <laughs> four. But I just want you to go one, two, three, four. But every time you do an action, a cut, a blow, a colpy, I want you to change how you're holding it. This is acceptable, no problem, one, to, doesn't matter, but I just want you to change the hold on the weapon every single time you do it, right? Because you really must start accessing this stuff quickly, and this is the best way to do it, practice it. Two, three, and maybe just one hand now. Four, okay, back to one again. Hey, no problem. One, 
position over because I've got this for two. Yeah? Just start thinking of it as an extension of your body. Change after every single cut. <clears throat> so I'm trying to give you some context, right? Why, why it's important to think of the sword as just a big Swiss army knife that I can use in lots of different ways. Okay, so we're gonna build it up. We have a really basic, simple, straightforward exercise first and we'll just start building it up, right? I haven't thought about which one I'm gonna do. So, okay, let's assume that he is not committed, just wants to wander around, he's weak with his covers, he's not particularly experienced, right? Let's assume he's armored though. So he's got loads of money, like Americans, it's all gear, no idea. Where's Jason? There he is. Uh, okay, so assume that I've been testing, I've been testing my distance a little bit, he's been non-committal, his covers aren't particularly, yeah, they're a bit woolly, they're a bit shit, so do you know what, I'm going to swap this around and I'm just going to smash it like this. Because if his covers are crap, that will hit something. And if it doesn't, if I've been particularly unlucky, it's okay, because you can fight like this, as anybody that's doing the armour stuff will, will tell you. Look, there's a position, no problem. Okay, so I just, it's a situational thing, absolutely, but I, I just need a way into this lesson to show you why sometimes it's absolutely beneficial. Like this is just not happening. You know, he's not committed, he's covered just, you know, he's covered the crap. Oh, fuck him. Yeah, but most close to him. That will land, most likely. Now I'm trying to be nice. Got to be careful, because that will probably dent a fencing mask, if not knock him out. But be gentle, okay? That's it, that's first action. We'll do loads of stuff after that. But I just need an entry into this where I'm going with it, okay? So, pair up, be careful with these bits. So, we're gonna go a slightly different way with this instead. Um, the point of that, though, was that it's, it's when and why you transition to the kind of attack you were making. And I just picked it at random. But it's not about, it's more about, you've assessed the situation, you know his covers are crap, you know he's not particularly talented at this, and you're frustrated, and you want to get something out of him, you want to get that, that, that big hit going in. Um, so as I say, I needed an option and entry. The point isn't to kind of do these techniques or whatever, and then just do this, because I'm obviously going to get nailed, yeah? It takes all the time in the world. What I've done is I've pre-assessed all of that, and I've come to here, because I want him to think, I'm half sorted, yeah? And I'm positioning myself, and I know his covers are crap, so that's when I just do this. Just to, just to hurt him and draw him out. Obviously, I'm not trying to hit him with that, because I just did that by accident. So that was kind of the point of that. It's a, it's a why to do it, not necessarily how to do it. But we'll ditch that for a second. Right. We are all used to 100. Fired out in a minor, correct? Okay. Your, one of you will go into this poster, the other person will cut for the intake. I'm going to kind of hybrid a technique to make a point. You're going to cover as you do, you're going to completely ignore all of that, you're going to take your weapon and you're just going to come through like this. This is similar to a play, but not an actual play, but I'm going to do it on both sides, which is why I've chosen, right? So make a cover you're used to making, but if you're open, else is going, I'm going to just come through like this, okay? Especially obviously with armour. Just have a play of that for a second, we'll do one on the other side, we'll go a different way with this, which I think will be just as much fun, so don't worry. Okay? Alright, so I'm just going to spend the next... Half an hour just picking a load of random examples of stuff to get you understanding why, when, and how to transition between the different whole ways of the story. So, a bit of a change of plan, but as I say, equally as fun, so it's all good. Uh, another one we can do, just going at random here, trying to apply plays. Uh, let's do uh, cross the breadway cover and a bleed port. Yeah, so Fernando Reverso from let's see yeah, or wherever. Okay, I'm going to come forward, cross the breadway. You guys are absolutely used to this. This is very similar to exchange of points, but it was just for a cup, so we're good. Uh, what I'm going to do is not give two hoops about any of that. I'm going to literally just do the same action as I ended up in last time. I'm going to do the same thing again, okay? The reason why I like this, it's not very often actually, is an opening attack. Someone goes from that shoulder, right? So in sparring and stuff like that, you guys will be probably a lot less comfortable with attack from the left than from his right. The reason why I like this as a particular option is because it's very clean. And also because I'm the one that's pushing into his center line, like this, I've got so much more strength and leverage, okay? Which means that I've definitely commanded this position. I've definitely got control of the centre line. His biggest options now are to move. But of course, the beauty of doing this in my whole body is as he starts to move, I've still got all of this left. You understand? It's a tool, right? So I'm not being exclusive for my train of thoughts. Yeah, that's it, no problem. Exactly across the breadway, right in the middle of my body, no worries. I just push down on it. He's got very few options from there, okay? One of his options, potentially, is to spin out of the cover that way. Yeah, that's about the safest option he's gonna go, but I've got all of that shit to follow him. 
understand? So I won't go into the guards too much, but they're very principle driven. Okay, we're going to nick a couple for the purposes of this. We'll stop sides though. So, uh, guard number three shows a guy who's basically got his hand down here. The reason why he's got his hand down there is because he wants extra distance on his sword. Okay? I can't see that from here very well. So if we've been moving around in distance, I've been making a couple of covers, whatever. If he suddenly slips his hand back like that, he's got an extra, what? Seven inches, maybe, distance, which is a big deal. The other thing as well is he's preparing to just throw it like this. And because he's gonna do it one-handed, he's not just got the extra reach of the, having his hand down low, but he's also got the extra distance he can make up with his shoulder. So once he hands on it, he comes back. Yeah, that's as far as I can go. You'll have to forgive me, I've got a dodgy right hand, so don't pay attention to exactly what I'm doing on the back of this, but anyway. And then if I've got one hand on it, yeah, it's gonna come that little bit further forward. So that's what he's preparing to do, okay? There's another dude who basically, if you think of the one-handed sword poster, it's quite similar to that, but his feet are actually forward, and he's done this. Okay, and these two face each other. Reason why is because I'm gonna need to deal with the extra distance he's just given himself, the extra space he can make up. How I do that is with this, like this, and make a half something cover. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. If you stick your sword out, John, is it halfway through your action? Because I've got a mask on. He's going to send through a long lunging thrust like that. What you guys are going to do, the other half of you, on this poster, it's a bit alien because most of you will be used to this. Uh -huh. You are going to get used to catching it on your pointer like that. Yeah? Because that's how you deal with it. Yeah, I'm quite safe here. Obviously, we're trying to be really safe with that the mask, I'll put a hat on with it. But you're catching it with this bit. The most important thing about this is that you step offline when you do it. It's quite similar to what you were showing earlier on with coming offline and taking that big, uh, sort of decent cover and action. Yeah, I'm still trying to be safe. I'm not really. <laughs> yeah, that's what coming offline. I will stick a mask on, but off, round. Yeah, then just close. It's very, you can see where this is going, right? Let's give it a try. Most of you probably wouldn't have done any guards yet. So, uh, yeah, if you want to do in the manual, uh, I nominate John and Nick to talk it through them. So give it a go. Okay. I think people are getting a bit tired now, aren't they? Luckily, we've got lectures at the end of the day. Yeah, so I thought that was a nice bit of fun. Yeah, yeah. It's story time. It's sleeping bags, I think. Story time. <laughs> All right, look, uh, as I say, I've sort of ditched the lesson plan because I just will go off somewhere else for this, but I'll show you a couple of uh, transitions that Fiori specifically does as part of this place, okay? What I really want you to take away is just, just, a, just an idea. The concept of this just being a tool, okay? Because that's how I think of it, as I said at the beginning. I don't make dissociation between putting one hand on it, two hands on it. For me, it's, I'll just use it however. Yeah, I'll use it within system, and we've been principal, um, but yeah, if it achieves a name, I just grab it and use it. It's not a problem. So uh, some of you would have done Fury's false point, yeah, where he makes a Metsani, and he basically aims to make a light map contact with his hands like to lure this guy out into some semblance of a defense. He aims to make a very light amount of contact, which he does say, uh, and then he basically tries to transition like this to a half sword. So we're going to do that play and the one after it. Okay, this is an, an example straight out of the manuscript of where he actually is doing this transition to achieve an A. Okay, so we'll play with that. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm going to do the counter now, slowly, slowly. So we're here. As he starts to move, I'm going to half sword myself. Okay, so I end up in this position. So we turn around, keep going up. I go to the position like this, okay? This can manifest itself in three main ways, and I don't always get to the same. So if John does the cut, he just stops. So I'll move, it's going to be right out, no problem. Kind of posture frontale, or have I get it? As he starts to cut around, because he's let go, I'm kind of clear. You're really fast about it. Right, as he starts to cut around, I'm just going to let this drift in. Sometimes I'll catch it on top of this arm, like that, okay? Great for me. What I've done is I've taken, I've come offline a little bit and I've taken the shorter distance. So I'm now safe from his half sword thrust because I'm, I'm taking the shorter route and I'm coming offline, I've got my own arm. So sometimes it's on top of his left wrist. Sometimes I'll catch it, and as he does it, as it starts to drift forward, sometimes it'll be inside of both of his arms. But the thing is, I'm safe because he can't really do much from me. I'm leaning on it, right? He might be able to stick it out like this, but that's not the truth. See, I'm going to thrust him through the chest, right? And sometimes, which is what happens when most people are learning this, is sometimes you do this and you just end up completely on top of the weapon. So you can see it here or 
here, most of the time, you'll end up here. That's okay. I've got leverage, I've got angle. You can do very little from there unless he starts bringing in the right arm. We'll get to that. Yeah? So you're all just doing the play, just mindlessly do this. Just stick it out, see what you end up with. The reason why I'm safe, as I say, is because you'll notice I come off line again. Yeah? And come up, look. Here. So I'm quite safe on the brush. Any other stuff we've got time we'll get to. Okay? Again, if you're with someone who's done this before, they've probably done the counter. So stay with the same partners and just have a work for it. But this is subtle and it's fast. Okay? All bits. All oh, bloody say yes, by the way. Did anybody see the vlog that went out last week when I was doing the stretto stuff? It's in my watch Is that a yes? Just say yes. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Just again, I'll see that. Right. Uh, I got some feedback actually about something that I did when I did the two-handed pommel strike, right? So we swap sides. What I did, it was just purely, I was just chatting to the class and we were just doing this, because I vlog as I teach, right? And uh, it was uh, Lara, uh, Lara, sorry, Shreta, so you come in. How did I do it? Oh, yeah, I was doing it. Yeah. Me and Nick Tyler, and I was doing the two-handed strike like this, left foot coming forward. What I did was I had a chat to my class, I came down like this onto the arm, and then I rolled over. As I said, you can do whatever you want after this. We're going to do that now. Now, I didn't plan that, preempt that. What happened was, I was just chatting, I was going to the technique, I was explaining about the importance of this bit, and then I said, and from here you can just fucking do whatever. You can strike in, you can come over the top, whatever. And if you look at the video, it's, it's in there anyway. So let's do just that, right? Because this is another good transition to do. Okay? And now I'm going to stretch over now, they'll come through like this. Some of you would have done this play, some of you haven't. Left foot forward, pump comes up, we're getting the twist, okay? What I do from here is up to me. I can do the next play, or I could abandon it. Down that comes, and then what I do is I just come over like that, just keep them away, keep them at distance. Give it a try, alright? Just for shits and giggles. One more time. Very good side. Right, I'm working for stretch over. This is coming through, down, and as I recover, I just kept them away like that. This is what I'm trying, this is what I mean. This is why I don't think that this is one or two handed or whatever. To me, it's just, it's just a tool. Yeah, it's no problem. I'll use it however I need to. So give that a try, as the last time I do. Then whatever, yeah, whatever, we'll be good to go. Place where he absolutely does just use it for a purpose. So we just did one, we did two. Yeah? It goes back to kind of what I was saying yesterday, is, is pressure testing and also just experimenting, okay? So, you know, if you're, in, a, in school and your teacher says to you, yeah, you can do half an hour of sparring. Why not make use of that time by doing something constructive as well as sparring? Maybe just have a play around with some of the other stuff in the manuscript or understanding what things you can do along these sort of lines. And eventually you'll start connecting the dots anyway. But when you're armoured, I mean, you guys know, you, 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 you're, you're in the company of exiles, you know, distance goes down really, really quick. You can't see very much. You're not. You're just not sure about what's what. And this is kind of king, right? This is just open stuff. The rest of it all breaking down to this distance. And every single part of it is damaged. There's an armpit. There's <laughs> a visor. Yeah. So you've got to start thinking of it like that at some point. So maybe start the journey early. Yeah. And just just have a play with it. The one thing I definitely recommend for everybody, sort of as you get into the sort of level two is definitely, definitely start thinking about it as one and two hands. So you don't have to worry about this stuff for a while, but definitely just get used to the fact that, you know, this is just an evolution of something, yeah? No problem, it's all there. <coughs> definitely start thinking about that. The rest will come later on, yeah? You cut with two hands, you move in, oh my God, one hand imposter, there's a cover, there's a close. Do you know what I mean? Definitely start thinking about that, that. pretty soon, okay? So not quite to plan, but a little bit of laugh anyway. Um, the next person to do a lesson is probably far more organised than I am. But if there's any questions, just grab me. Otherwise, I think we've got about 10 minutes till the next class starts. All right? Thanks, thanks everyone.